This might look like an ordinary aircraft, but it's kind of anything but. It's fully electric and also fully autonomous. It's from a company called Whisk, and the idea is to get you to your destination in a fraction of the time. Whisk was started in 2010 and has since carried out nearly 2,000 test flights. Boeing acquired the startup in 2023 after having been an investor for several years. Whisk's air taxis can fly a distance of 90 miles at up to 120 knots. The idea is to quickly get you from point A to point B, all while dodging traffic. Aboard, you'll find amenities like in-flight Wi-Fi and air conditioning, which isn't always a given on smaller planes, so that can hopefully make your trip a little more comfortable. What you won't find is a pilot. This aircraft is fully autonomous. It's one of a handful of companies developing air taxis like Joby and Archer, but Whisk is aiming to launch as a self-flying transportation mode right from the get-go. Whisk recently unveiled its sixth generation air taxi, which has a roomy, modified interior. I stopped by the company's headquarters in Mountain View, California to get an exclusive look at the new design and to learn more about when Whisk plans to take off with passengers. Okay, so this is bigger than I anticipated, which is good. It means there's more leg room. Um, tell me a little bit about this sixth generation aircraft. Sure. Uh, this is the biggest aircraft we've built. It's a four-seater. Everything beforehand has been two or one. It's got a 50-foot wingspan, also bigger than anything we've built before. It's got 12 lift fans. You can see that the front row, they tilt. So that's what gives you that lift, and then they tilt forward, and that's what gives you that cruise flight. The ones in the back actually shut off when you're cruising. Um, Fascinating. You only use those for the vertical part of the takeoff. But another reason it's big is we want to be able to carry a lot of stuff. Mm. Um, so this is the frunk. Love a frunk. Um, <laughs> it's fantastic. So we were talking about that multimodal journey before. Um, if you're coming off a commercial flight, you probably have a roller bag. Oh. Um, so this fits, you know, four roller bags, one per person. And then in the cabin, you've got those storage bins for your personal item, your, your backpack, your briefcase, your purse. Gotcha. All that goes in the cabin, but our frunk is Special. That's perfect. I love that. I never thought I'd see an airplane with a front. That's <laughs> fantastic. An aircraft with that. You'll also notice there's a door for each passenger so you don't have to awkwardly climb over the person next to you to get in or out. We want to make sure it's intuitive. Uh, we want to make sure it's not too new in that respect. So um, getting in and out is just like you climbing in and out of an SUV or a sedan and ground crew are responsible for that. So you don't have to worry about making sure your door is shut properly or anything like that. Um, okay. So speaking of the inside, should we Jump in. Yes, right, absolutely. Let's do it. Sitting inside of the Whisk aircraft really does just feel like being inside of a car. It's got everything from armrests to cup holders to chargers, and there are compartments to stow smaller carry-on items like backpacks and purses. Whisk's latest aircraft is more spacious than its previous generations, and it can comfortably seat up to four people. Everything has kind of gone one step closer to production, one step closer to reality. Because we take off and land vertically like a helicopter, we need special seats helicopter certified seats and they have a special energy absorption mechanism okay so if you have a hard landing it's going to keep you safe mm -hmm. this is an airline buckle this is super intuitive everyone mm -hmm. knows how to use these yeah. they don't require a lot of dexterity a lot of strength they're super accessible part of trusting the aircraft an autonomous aircraft is believing knowing that it knows where it's going mm -hmm. so you're familiar with this ribbon right you see that on every gps yeah but this is telling you what your flight path is gonna be. Okay. So if you're flying in a dense urban area with skyscrapers, mm -hmm. or if you're flying, you know, in the LA basin and you're surrounded by terrain, mm -hmm. knowing that the aircraft knows those things are there is huge. Yeah. It's like your Tesla or your Waymo showing you that there's other cars or pedestrians. Right. It's the same thing. That screen will also show you your safety briefing, which if you're like me and typically ignore this part on commercial flights, you might actually want to pay attention to since a self-flying plane is uncharted territory for most of us. Air sickness bags are also provided, but we hope you won't need one. <laughs> uh, same. The safety briefing notes that a camera is constantly monitoring the cabin and passengers for safety, and there's a call button both in the aircraft and in the Whisk mobile app. Whisk is also baking accessibility into the overall experience. That includes having sign language in the safety video, to adding braille and raised lettering on the stair railing, to having a loading platform for wheelchairs. Passengers can also bring their wheelchairs on board and have them stored right next to them. The sixth generation Whisk aircraft hasn't flown just yet. 
but the goal is to get it up in the air by the end of this year for testing. It'll be at least a few years before passengers can climb aboard. What would you say to somebody who is nervous about hopping into something like this in terms of what's happening on the ground as something like this takes off? We talk about how the aircraft is autonomous, but there are people on the ground watching. So that person is called the multi-vehicle supervisor. They are keeping an eye on your flight. They can intervene if there's a problem. They can talk to ATC and they can put you down in an expedited fashion if there is a problem on board. Even though WISC's aircraft is autonomous, AI doesn't play quite as central a role as you might expect. The aircraft isn't thinking. Um, it's not, you know, doing machine learning. Um, it's actually doing something very reliable and predictable and importantly, not to many people's knowledge, existing today. So your commercial flight that you've probably taken to get here, um, most of that's automated. You know, more than 90% of it is automated in some fashion and it's reducing the workload of the pilot. It's making that journey safer by keeping them focused on critical tasks that aren't handled by the machine. Similarly, we're flying a pre-programmed route with you know, alternate locations in case of an emergency, alternate locations in case of weather, um, but it's all pre-programmed. The only thing it's doing on the fly is detecting and avoiding potential hazards. So if you have someone not talking to ATC, flying in your way, our aircraft can see that aircraft, avoid it, and then get back on track and finish that flight without anyone having to intervene. That's the only real autonomous aspect when landing, the aircraft will communicate with on-the-ground systems that can see the landing zone and make sure it's all clear. If you're still feeling uneasy about flying on an aircraft without a pilot, WISC says its tech will actually make flights safer. There are redundant systems on board, redundant software, battery, propulsion, everything is fail-safe, there's no single point of failure, it's incredibly safe. So what will the process actually look like for getting on one of these autonomous aircraft? You'll use an app to plan your full journey, starting with how you get to the aircraft, to the flight itself, and then getting from the landing point to your final destination. WISC will partner with other companies to ideally make each of these transportation steps available in one app, whether it's taking a scooter, riding a bike, or hailing a rideshare, so your trip is covered from start to finish. And how much will it cost to ride in a WISC air taxi? It's going to change over time. It'll obviously go down over time, especially as this starts to scale, which you could only do with an autonomous system. Um, right now, we're talking about something like an Uber Black. So that that's kind of the order of magnitude you can expect at entry into service. At first, the service will probably cater most to business travelers getting off of commercial flights and heading to their next destination, especially since prices are likely to be high in the beginning. Over time, WISC plans to expand availability and have the aircraft land in more central, convenient locations on what are called vertiports. These are essentially helipads with charging infrastructure, and they might also house amenities for passengers like bathrooms and restaurants. For an autonomous aircraft like ours, it'll have ground systems that help our aircraft land. So it'll support all the onboard sensors with ground-based supervision that will let it land safely. WISC says it only takes 15 minutes to charge the aircraft. That means it can be done in around the time it takes to get passengers off a flight and prepare the cabin for the next riders. You might be wondering, all right, but when do I get to ride in one of these? The goal is to launch by 2030, pending FAA certification, and this will take off first in Houston, LA, and Miami. But I wanna know what you think. Would you be willing to take a ride on one of these guys? Let us know in the comments and be sure to hit like and subscribe for more on all things tech. Thanks for watching.